This, can you see that now? Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, I've been trying the last couple of years to present some history of some other minor calculator brands. You may remember the Commodore presentation that was done a year or two ago, whenever that was. Unisonic has always been an, an, uh, a brand of calculators that I have had a, uh, an affection for, and I'll explain that in a minute. Part of it's because of the unique and, and I think very clean and, and nice looking industrial design. Stainless steel, uh, three colors of keys, orange, blue, and white. Most of the time a green display uh, that's tilted toward the user, so they have a very distinctive style most of the time. But Unisonic calculators. Unisonic, this is taken from Wikipedia, was an American manufacturer and distributor of consumer electronics goods, including video games, beyond the calculators. Um, they made most of their uh, uh, models, of course, in Hong Kong, South Korea, and Japan. You can look that up on Wikipedia yourself. What's so special about them? Uh, well, as I say, the fairly consistent industrial design, green display, but in many ways, Unisonics are the reason, probably, why I am here and why I am interested in calculators and have done what I've done. Unisonics were the store brand in Kmart throughout the 1970s. Um, and you would have an ad kind of like this one that would show up in the newspaper. I remember those. But uh, I'm going to back up. In the summers of 1973, 1974, and 1975, probably 1974 specifically, I would go with my mom during the day when school was out when she wanted to go shopping. We would go everywhere, of course, and we'd go into Kmart, and she would go off doing her shopping, and in those days, it wasn't considered uh, an offense to be jailed for by letting your children walk around in the store on their own. Um, so I would walk around looking at things, and after looking at baseball gloves and whatever, you can only look at so many of those, I found the only real area in Kmart that had anything of interest to me, which was the watch and jewelry counter. And I discovered in a stand on top of that a display that had these wonderful, wonderfully strange things in them, and they were unisonic calculators. I still remember being amazed at how they could do multiplication. Two times two really is four. And so whenever we would go to Kmart, I would always go over and check the counter and see what the new calculators out were. And I remember watching those develop over time with new interesting and additional buttons that I had no idea what they did, but I was captivated. So Unisonics hold a special place in my memory because they are the first calculators I ever really noticed, certainly the first ones I would have punched on. And they stimulated my interest in math science to an extent, as well as in calculators generally. So Unisonics were, as I say, often uh, sold through Kmart, many of these, and I want to show the development of some of these over time. Uh, I remember these models, as I say here, uh, you know, what was this 1 over X button? What did that do? I was hooked. One of the first ones they had, this is a desktop Unisonic, the 767, has a nice plug in the back. Uh, I'm not going to show you any models that don't at least have a square root button. So I had to cut it off somewhere. They made a couple of hundred different models. So you have a square root button. Those are kind of mushy keys. All of the Unisonics had mushy keys. This is probably the first model I found at Kmart when I was a kid. The 728P. What does the P stand for? I don't know. Percent? No idea. But it had a square root button on it. So what on earth was that thing? 728P. This was the 739SQ. Maybe that's square or square root. I don't know, but here they lost the orange buttons and had the reciprocal square and square root key. Notice the uh, industrial design essentially being the same, just a few different keys. See how the industrial design is the same? So they were making great use of economies of scale. They did from time to time have slightly different looking ones. That's the same as the previous model, more or less. They added the pi, they've added a plus minus key, and the square root with these uh, orange colors. This was a 790RM. Maybe that's recall memory. I, I don't know why they called it the RM, but that had four key, a four key memory and a square root. And I think the EX button was not an exponent. It was to exchange the displayed number with the memory. 
The 1040 is a model that's really odd because Unisonic used that model number over and over again. So this is one of the versions of the 1040, and you can see that lovely green display that's tilted toward you. But I'm going to flip back and forth between this picture and the next picture. There's a 1040, same green display, but what's different about that one with this one? What do you see that changed? Look at the top right corner. There's one extra key that's been added in this image compared to the other one, and that's that GPM key, which has to stand for gross profit margin. I had no idea how it works, but they took that model, which had been selling, and plopped another key down under the on-off button until they decided to change it yet again and made this third version of the 1040. Here, the gross profit margin button has gone away, so has the clear and the clear entry keys, and now all they have is the clear slash clear entry key. So the same as this one, except they decided to consolidate keys. Why? Who in the world knows? The 1034 added pi to the square, square root, and reciprocal button, still with the, uh, in my opinion, beautiful three-color scheme. The 840 looks like some of the other ones that we've seen. It's like a 1040 in a smaller uh, casing. The size on the screen is not indicative of the size in real life. Here is the 839R. Why the 839R? I don't know, but it looks like a combination of the three scientific-ish functions and the exchange memory key up there at the top. This model added parentheses. It was the first model of parentheses. I do hope that Gertrude Barber is still not looking for this model. <laughs> if you know Gertrude, please do not tell her where I live. But uh, parentheses added to this model, the 1048. They also made some small, these were considered tiny models at the time. These were certainly fitting into your hand. Uh, the, eight, the 931 and the 940, uh, tiny, tiny little calculators for their day and age. You can have these in your pocket or, or uh, carry bag and carry them around with you easily. There were a whole lot of varieties of these. If you look, the top three are all called the 940, but they have slightly different layouts of things. They, again, made mostly green displays, but a few were red. The bottom one in the middle showing the red LED instead of the usual green displays for these. And this is an oddball. I don't have a better picture of it, but this is one of those tiny ones, the Unisonic 911 with a complete red display and a totally different industrial design. Sorry for the fuzziness. I did the best I could. They branched out from time to time with taller models. This is more reminds me of some of the Rockwell models that were longer than you would have expected, especially given the area they wasted more or less down at the bottom for metric and other conversions. Not to be uh, um, said that you can't have fun on a calculator, Unisonic made two different blackjack models. This was the Casino 7. Now, at least with this one, you can, using the black keys on the bottom, pretend to be adding up numbers or multiplying them while you're playing uh, blackjack. And then this more of a desktop model, which they called Jimmy the Greek, the Unisonic 21. If you look above the multiplication button, you might be able to see the signature where they actually have Jimmy the Greek signing uh, on the out uh, on the uh, outside of the calculator, uh, but uh, dedicated primarily to playing blackjack. <coughs> Getting a little more advanced, uh, they, I eventually do get to these. So I'm trying to go rather quickly. You can take a look at these later if you want. The 749. Many of the models have a nine at the end of them if they're relatively scientific, but this one added percent pi and the other features we've seen before. Finally, getting to some models with some science functions. You know, in Commodore, I kind of refused to talk about them if they didn't have trigonometry. Uh, so the first Unisonic that had trigonometry is the 796. If I were to zoom in on the 796 model number, you would see that the numbers are not aligned. If you put a ruler underneath them, they're not aligned. The 9 and the 6 are not in a line with the 7. I don't know how they were painting them on there, but it's pretty, uh, pretty shoddy. Here, this is one of the one of the few models. This would be an interesting question to ask: Which models have direct keys for the inverse uh, sine, cosine, and tangent functions? They're separate keys, one for sine, one for the inverse functions, without an inverse or an arc key. I may pose that on the HP Museum. 
but you can see at least this added logs and the trig functions. Here are two versions of one. You'll see this one on eBay quite a bit, the 799, two different models. The one on the right is an abomination. Um, maybe they ran out of keys or they only had clear keys or some, uh, I mean, no writing on the keys. But that's a horrible model to use. Look at that bottom right button. Plus slash minus slash pi. <laughs> Talk about a user interface disaster. Does that add? Does it subtract? Do I hit it twice for subtract? No, that's a chain sign or pi, depending on whether you press the F slash CF function. Terrible, terrible. So if you're going to get a 799, look for the one that at least has the shift functions written above it. I mean, that's just nasty. The 1099 is another variety of the 799. In fact, the key layout is exactly the same as the 799. Uh, there's two of them here because I couldn't find a better picture of them. But if you look at the 799, 799 on the left, that's the same as this 1099. 1099 is rather hard to find, but it's exactly the same as the 799, so uh, I haven't really tried to find one. Here's the, the most advanced machine Unisonic ever made. The 1299, and even so, it couldn't get pi correct, could it? Um, it has the sine, cosine, tangent, the logs, pi, powers, uh, degrees to degrees, minutes, seconds, and polar to rectangular, rectangular to polar. So that's a relatively advanced, and two levels of parentheses. You can also do your stuff in uh, radians, degrees, or grads. If you notice, the box of the 1299 next to it is a, has a mistake on it. It's showing only eight digits displayed without the exponent. You cannot get that display on the 1299. It'll always show the exponent. I hate that. They also did a couple of models in a different form factor that still showed the silver uh, stainless steel, but uh, in this kind of model, these are some of the few models they made where the buttons actually click. Every model we've seen up to this point is a springy sound when you push the buttons. These click. You see that 1540 and the 1548 quite often on eBay. Uh, I would leave those alone. This is the piece de resistance. Uh, this is the 1499. It has um, pi still is correct rounded, but uh, it has hyperbolics on it. This was an argument I had with Guy Ball uh, forever. I knew that there was a unisonic that had hyperbolic functions built in. He said, no way, uh, I've seen them all. And one night, sitting on my couch, this thing popped up on eBay. My wife thought I was having a fit because I couldn't put five <laughs> down. <laughs> to this day, it is the only $14.99 I have ever seen anywhere, eBay or elsewhere. And it does work, has a nice red LED display and hyperbolic functions and the trig functions. Uh, so very, very, very rare, in my opinion. Almost as rare as this guy, the 766. This is the only uh, example of the financial Unisonic I have ever seen. Uh, it uses the same logic as many of those early financial models used where you have to enter values and then compute the unknown. Uh, TI apparently still uses that logic in their BA2+. Plus. Um, but uh, in this case, uh, the display is, of course, again, the green. And uh, this is a very, very rare little beastie here as well. So which one of these are you going to rush out and buy off of eBay? I'm looking at you, Dave Ramsey. I'm already looking for the 1499. There is a cool, why would you want to buy one of these? I mean, come on. It's a very cool 70s design. The stainless steel, the bright colors, the, the beauty of the springing noise you make when you're trying to get it to register a keystroke. It just can't be. Uh, it's worth, in my opinion, again, having at least one of these in your collection. Let me try to branch out. You, you may have seven HP 25s. You probably could have at least one Unisonic. Which one would I recommend that you try to hunt, hunt for? The 1299 shows up on eBay semi regularly. regularly. The 799 model shows up much more often. Either one would probably work if you're wanting to branch out and try your hand at a unisonic model. Again, why does this hold such a, uh, a place of affection for me? 
I can still to this day remember going to Kmart with my mom, who just passed away a couple of months ago, where I discovered calculators for the first time. So that's why I want to recommend some of the rest of you try to branch out and at least pick up one Unisonic to put along with all the other ones that you might have in your closet or display. And watch for the $14.99 if you happen to see one of those. That is the end of my Unisonic uh, presentation. Does anyone have any questions on Unisonics or the calculator ads for me? Okay, we've got a couple, Jane. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. So what uh, back, did they use battery packs or what kind of batteries did they use? Batteries. What kind of batteries? Batteries. Most of the Unisonics use double A's. A few of the small handheld ones use triple A's, but I would say 80 to 90 percent use regular old double A's. Easy to keep powered and unpull them out when you don't want to uh, uh, you know, leave them stored that way. Yes, one, so another question. If, if the Unisonic brand is revived, you should be the salesperson. <laughs> uh, can, you, can you see the room, Gene? I can. I see Eric Smith in the front row. I did see Eric Smith in the front row. Hello, Eric. <laughs> Sitting right back, Eric Reckland, of course. Brothers. So my question, Gene, is uh, looking at the 739 in particular and many models with the green display, the springy keys, and on the 739, the color patterns of the keys, they kind of remind of the Canon Caltronics. Was there any connection or joint work at that time between the two companies? You know? I did hear your question, and my answer is I, I really don't know. Uh, this Once this gets put uh, online, it will probably be the most information available on the Internet, period, about Unisonic calculators. I have not been able to find any ever. Apparently, I'm the only one that has a pile of these lying about the house. Gene, are, are you seeing a live picture? Not anymore, no. It looks like it froze, huh? But I still hear you just fine. Any other questions? Eric? The, oh, no. the presentation I did not get a chance to do, I will try to reschedule for next year, and that is intended to be a history of financial calculators. Ooh. Excluding the, I see the picture for now. Excluding the HP 80, I intend to try to chart some of the early financial calculators after the HP 80 before the TI uh, business analyst uh, came out. There was a host of other brands, odd brands, uh, financial calculators that uh, I want to try to help preserve. And many or most of them use that same logic where you enter values and then compute the difference. Why Texas Instruments continues to use that same user interface today in 2018, I do not understand. But uh, fortunately, we have the best financial calculator ever made under $25, the TIB, uh, the HP 10B2 Plus, thanks to Tim Westman. So congratulations, Tim. Anything else, guys? I know you're waiting to get uh, Tom speaking, so I don't want to take any more time. Thanks a lot, man. All right, thank you guys. I miss all of you. Bye, Bob. Thanks, man. Okay, thanks, Gene.